So, Bridge. <laughs> yes. I feel like we both have an update on our fun events of the yeah. weekend. Yeah. But I, on Friday, oh, yeah. saw Jurassic Park <gasps> with a live orchestra. <laughs> Was it, is it, was it an amazing? It was amazing. And so <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm pretty sure to the date, a year before. Why is this hard to say? The, <laughs> the year before okay. the day I saw Jurassic Park, I think was the exact day that I saw Jaws oh. with the live orchestra at the same place. And I was like, well, this is a yearly tradition now, but fine. Um, But when I saw Jaws, which the music is, there's more isolated sounds mm. and more silence. I could hear the metronome. And the metronome, if you don't know, listeners, is what keeps the time. So it's like the time beat. I could hear that. We could all hear that the whole time. And I was like annoyed. And I was like, I don't think we should be hearing that. Because then you're just hearing like, like <laughs> you're hearing like a steady beat. Maybe it was by a mic by accident or something weird. I don't fucking know. So I was a little nervous for Jurassic Park because I was like, I swear to fucking God, if I hear this much, I'm going to flip a table. But there wasn't one. <laughs> Woo! Awesome. It was great. It was great. Um, I had a very animated audience. Ooh. Like, it wasn't just me being animated. <laughs> like, everybody was really uh, animated at certain parts. It's kind of awesome. Did you, like a t-shirt gun, shoot our business cards everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> no, I fucking wish. <laughs> We were on the balcony, too. I could have made it rain. Oh, shit. What a missed opportunity. Oh, my God. No. Um, no. But there were just... Uh, it was just such a fun experience. And uh, I love doing that. Listeners, if you've never done something like that, you, you gotta, you do, gotta it. do that. It's so cool. Well, and you, so amazing. You, I think, really appreciate the subtle... Like, the thing with Jurassic Park, the subtle little, like... And then yeah. you're, and you're just like, ah, a raptor! And ah. all of these kind of little little notes just kind of get you going. And actually, in our movie, this movie was Hans Zimmer that we're oh, doing. Hans Zimmer. I think he just cut, copy pasted his cool runnings music and his music <laughs> okay, in a lot of parts. Okay. We'll talk about it. <laughs> My God. Yes, um, Kate. I think we could just run with your fun thing. I saw Chelsea oh, Handler. She was uh, amazing. She was a Barbie. Uh, she was absolutely a Barbie. And I knew it. My my quick takeaways were her energy is amazing. Seeing mm. someone be that high energy for that long is always inspiring. Yeah. And it was all a lot of new material, which is oh, you know, you kind of think, oh, am I going to hear the same stories? But she added a lot of new stuff, and oh, that's cool. That was pretty fun and different. And I would say that the audience is very random for her because she's almost too known. Yeah. So imagine an audience of like. Like suburban moms out on the town that are a little too loud. Oh, the like, wine moms. A little mm. bit, a little bit like, that's hilarious, that joke she just told. We're like, we're we're listening. We Bam. Don't, we don't need your commentary. <laughs> And then you have kind of druggies, which I didn't understand, but there were so many people that went to the bathroom like multiple times that it was like, are you guys like super drunk or on drugs? Or are you doing drugs? Or mm. I don't know what's happening, but it, it was to the point I felt like a hall monitor. I was like, will you respect Chelsea and sit the <laughs> fuck down? <laughs> um, and then wow. I would say third is the theater that it was in is this iconic Chicago theater. But I got, I like balled out and got kind of close seats. Ooh. But, I mean, like 30 rows back, close seats. Mm. But the theater itself is so old that you like fall into these chairs and then everyone's like getting up and down. And it's like hot and some suburban mom is screaming behind you and you're like, ah, uh, <laughs> sensory overload. Wow. <laughs> um, oh my God. So... I feel like with comedians, when they come out with a special, it's like at the end of like all of their new material tour. And yeah. I'm curious to see how she packages it all. So that's my quick right. summary. But big fan. Continue to be a fan. Yeah, I love her. Yeah. And I bought, it's called Little Big Bitch. And I bought a huge, huge sweatshirt that says Little Big Bitch. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. I think I was the only one. You know how like, it's like overpriced. I was like, I'll yeah. take one. It's like, that's me. <laughs> They made their quota. Thanks to you. <laughs> sisters, sisters who seen it. We are the sisters, sisters who seen it. Sisters, shooby doo we doo what? Sisters, shooby doo we doo what? Sisters, sisters, sisters.
sisters, sisters. Sisters who seen it. Hello! Hello! I'm first! Yep, that yep, never happened. You were. You did it. Good job. Welcome back, listeners. This was a ride, folks. Am I right? Um, I rode this ride right before we started podcasting. So, did she wow. did you! Top of mind ride! It was. It was a time. Uh. <laughs> There is a lot happening here, but first, oh, Gabe, man. who are we? What are we oh. doing? Why are, why are people here? What are they what listening are we doing? to? Who, what, where, when? Um, Listeners, yes, let me introduce ourselves. So, we are the Sisters Who Seen It, the podcast where two sisters who are not movie critics look back on some of our favorites throughout the years through a psychological ethical and familial lens i'm katie i'm bridget uh um most of the things are offensive i know i'm like what can i say without being a dick oh nope i can't say that one i Um, i think there was a lot of quotes with elvis in it okay yes the only quote i'm finding that's kind of okay is where your white ass is coming from was said by a white man to another white man and i was like um or anything okay. that came out of Alabama's mouth. I had to come all the way from the highway and the byways of Tallahassee, Florida, to Motor City, Detroit, find my true love. Damn, Bridge, that's a quote. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the movie this week? It is the 1993 True Romance. And Kate, 1993 is... The Best, best Year for, for Movies! This it is was a ride and it is your time to do the synopsis oh god help me okay hold on just <laughs> all right, here, 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 i'll get i'll get you i'll kick it off for you mm. in detroit loner clarence marries a girl named alabama steals cocaine from her pimp and tries to sell it in hollywood meanwhile the owners of the cocaine the mob track them down and try to reclaim it <laughs> yep <laughs> that's it <laughs> wow i mean that's the movie um okay 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 all right we'll get into it in detail <laughs> give a stretch give a stretch okay. but let me start off by saying we got a cast of characters here oh and this is a listener pick we should call oh, out the listener yeah. oopsie daisy this is a listener pick this was picked by james james i have a lot of questions for you <laughs> james do we need to talk later what's going on um, there's a cast of characters in this movie. I don't know if it's fair to call it an ensemble cast. I think because, so. But, like, we kind of have main people that we stick with, and then some people come in and out, and I don't know. It's weird. Uh-oh, Kate, special guest coming oh, in real quick. Ah! <laughs> it's special guest, the listener who picked it. <laughs> hey. Hey, Katie. So Katie was, I interrupted her. She was right in the middle of the synopsis. And I thought you could just give one or two anything about this movie. And then, then I'll leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. So I saw it in the theater when it came out. <laughs> Oh my god! And I was just like, I remember thinking, like, wow, this is um, this is a special movie. This is like something different. And obviously, that was long ago. And then I stumbled across an article just a little while ago that said it's on its uh, its thirtieth anniversary this year. Hey. It's, it's from the best year for movies. Yeah, that's right. I never heard that before, but I just don't got such a good point. Well, Katie always says that nineteen ninety three is the best year of movies, and here it is. And here it's the yeah. best year for movies, nineteen ninety three. I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to rewatch this because it's a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to. I didn't get a chance. We didn't get a chance to. We should have got our act together. Yeah, yeah. This this week's been kind of a lot. But again, I remember thinking, like, I watched it and I was like, wow, this is something different. This is something special. And then I see this article that comes out and it's, hey, it's the 30th anniversary of True Romance. I'm like, oh, I remember that movie. It was so special. It was so different. And you go through and you read this article and it's like, directed by Tony Scott, a Quentin Tarantino script with this, like, huge ensemble cast and also, like, all of these people, they all were on different places on their um, Hollywood star arc, yes. you know? It was like a very early Brad Pitt role. Mm-hmm. Like, he was yeah. very unknown at the time. And Christian Slater, he was kind of at his peak. I think Dennis Hopper had kind of become an unknown for a while at that point. I don't know. He was in the Super Mario Brothers movie. People don't forget. <laughs> Especially me. Yeah. Lots of famous people in this. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And Bridget even pointed out that it was Christopher Walken before he even had the um, very very uh very defined halting speech the, pattern the christopher walken voice yeah, yeah. you know yeah he was Puh. a little more less uh you know mumbly 
Well, thanks, honey. You're going to have to watch the movie and then listen to us. And then you could write us a review. I, absolutely. Woo! Yay! Thanks, Thank honey. you, James. Love you. Okay, okay, Kate. So you were in the middle of <laughs> describing the movie. Oh, man. A where- oh, boy. Okay, so <laughs> here's the thing. I didn't really learn anybody's names. <laughs> oh, there's too until many. Until there's too many. The end. I kind of then learned people's names. And actually, now I need to... Okay, so Clarence is Christian Slater. Correct. Okay, that's fact number one. He meets Alabama, who is Patricia Arquette. Correct. She originally is a call girl and she hooks up with him because his boss hired her to hook up with him because it's his birthday. And I was like, that's a nice boss. What the that's, fuck? That's, like, a, that's above and beyond. Who's that guy? Is Talk he... about that performance review. You owe him something for this. Anyway, so then they fall in love in two seconds and you know, it's very middle school romance, but it's also true romance, Bridge, <laughs> because that's the movie <laughs> title and fucking fun. So, because because she was a call girl, she had a pimp. And because it's the 90s and toxic masculinity is at its peak, peak, Christian Slater takes it upon himself to go murder her pimp. Big escalation. You know, it was a zero to a hundred. It really I, was. I think. It really was. I um have questions. <laughs> they don't get answered. No, they don't. And there we go. So unfortunately, though, this act of literal murder kicks off the plot, which is he thinks he's getting a a suitcase of her clothes and it's filled with cocaine as it's the 90s and drugs so now all these gangster people are like after them to get the cocaine so they go on the run they go to la to his friend i i got his friend's name wrong again for most of the movie i thought his name was vic it's dick <laughs> i'm gonna put a pin in that okay i'm gonna put a pin in that name i'm gonna say it one more time Dick. Everybody remember that name. We're, we're there. I have a thesis about this movie. Okay. Oh. So oh, Dick wow. is there. Dick is an aspiring actor. Go team. Um, and he basically goes there and he's like, I gotta sell this cocaine. You're in LA. You yeah. know people. Let's do <laughs> you, it. You're in Hollywood. You gotta know who does coke. And he does. <laughs> so Incredible. that's great. And then that they kind of get this deal set up with a movie director and whatever. But behind the scene, the gangsters are still going after them. Then the cops there's like weird cops and then basically at the end everybody dies except clarence and dick and alabama and then they escape to mexico with I think all their dick money dies. oh he does i thought he ran away oh maybe i thought he ran down the hallway maybe okay keep going sorry if that ruins your dick theory. is alive um and that's the movie and i there's billions of famous people. Every there, time you ev- blink, every- you're like, whoa, there's one more. Uh, it's Take a sip every time. No. Nowadays. Alcohol poisoning. When there's the ensemble cast, as you talk about, it's like a movie you don't want to see. Yeah. But this is a movie I do want to see. I just need them to update their like racist, terrible lines. Okay. But the plot is good. Yeah. Well, it's Quentin Tarantino. And like, this is his wheelhouse of like very fast paced drug crime ultra violence that's what he does where it's kind of like you know some misunderstanding gets us involved i mean it just is like that's what he's great at so yep. cool i was looking to see if this was one of his earlier green plays and like it kind of it was. was it was i thought it was but his it came first after one. reservoir dogs which was like a big one for him but i think this was his first screenplay even though it came out later yeah reservoir dogs came out in 1992 this came out in 1993 so. okay but this uh- was was like yeah big this, screenplay there's so much happening like we just have to get into it because i'm a little afraid this might be like a four hour synopsis oh i mean i finished my synopsis <laughs> before mean, like, so <laughs> <laughs> it actually ended all right here's the thing can we just talk about how clarence and alabama meet or should we like go scene by scene no which no one? to scene by scene okay nope. i was gonna say whoa i'm confused nope. so i as a kid love christian slater didn't all the girls okay does he have the same effect for you no okay i think then that this is an age i was thing. like a toddler though when he was okay on TV. rub it in but so uh, here's the thing it's like his voice He's, like, we've talked about that <laughs> one. <laughs> one. <laughs> one. 
<laughs> I'm laughing because one of my first lines is, oh God, I got to turn the volume up because it's Christian Slater <laughs> talking. Hello there. Hello. He's got I, such a fucking low voice. It's so low, but it's, it's so, so gravelly. It's so gravelly and sexy. And oh my God. You know, uh, James and I were talking about like him and Kevin Bacon kind of had this like skinny oh. rebel guy oh. thing. This was like mm. a, I don't know. This was kind of like their trope for a while, but loved yeah. it. And then I also then said James, and I knew you would make fun of me, is he's got great eyebrows. Oh, there's bridge. It's <laughs> like fucking he, eyebrow. He has oh this, my like, god. I'm a nice guy, but then he's got those scary eyebrows. So when he gets scary, and he gets mm. scary in this movie, yeah, he does. He does. you believe it. Yeah. So there's um, a little Christian Slater magic. And where the hell has he been? What's he up to? Can someone tell us? A, that's a great question. Wherefore art thou, Can, sir? What is his backstory? Can we give Christian Slater's? What is he doing in this movie? He I don't even know. A, he, he works at a comic book store. He works at a comic book store and goes to the movies by himself. On his birthday and he loves Elvis and does he have does he have a mental health disorder that he always sees Elvis? <laughs> Uh, probably number one. Okay, okay. Number two, this might be the moment I need to get into my thesis. Okay, we're here for I it. I could really bring it up any time because ready. We do. it happens so often. Um, was it just me or did you notice there were a lot of... <sighs> How do I say this? Um, yeah, let's just say it. Gay references. Oh, a ton. But not in the, like, I'm homophobic, even though some of them were. But a lot of times they weren't. Like, for example, Christian Slater loves Elvis. Mm-hmm. When we first meet him, he goes on a monologue about how he would have sex with Elvis. Yeah, he would. And he's, like, serious. He's like, he was, I would, I would. No, he said I if, I, if I had sex with a guy, I would absolutely have sex with Elvis. And I was like, okay, that's like one way to say you like someone. But it keeps going. And I swear to God, I felt like every scene, a male character is like talking about dick. Dick! This is where dick comes back and take the pin out. The guy's name is Dick. Hello! That's really obvious. We have a lot of crotch grabs. We have blowjob references. Between men, specifically. I, I just... <laughs> I, is this I, Quentin Tarantino's coming out film? I was gonna say, Quinton, do you want to talk about it? Quinton, we're here a, for you. This is a safe space and we support 30 everything. 30 years later, it's not too late to come out. Yeah, it's time. You left out all your feet references and you put in your penis references. Ooh. So, yeah. what do we think? The- all right, that's my thesis. Okay, I'm I done. love it. I love it. Okay. And I, as we keep going, I'm actually... It's gonna come up, I'm telling you. It's gonna come up a lot and I, mm-hmm. I think just bring it up and everybody, take a sip. It's the new Degrassi. Oh, so God. we meet in my opinion he's like trying to flirt with this woman and then you're like the title comes on you're like oh yeah is this about romance you're like okay there's got to be some romance <laughs> oh, here yeah. you know oh yeah what's happening and they're in detroit so it's very run down and dark and kind of just yeah. like city dreary vibe and alabama patricia arquette let's just what uh she's a queen what a scene stealer in this one i love her the scene between her and tony soprano fighting are you oh. kidding me me? That was a lot. That was I had a lot awesome. of feelings. That was, oh my god. She like I was also talking about this with James that she had when she was young like a bunch of roles and was kind of getting big and then she kind of fell off the map and people think he mentioned this but I I have to triple check it that she won an Oscar recently. Yeah, she but she was like gone for a good oh, portion yeah. of her career and yes. I think she um stood up to Harvey Weinstein and he blackballed her. I wow. think, but I I we have to triple check that. Folks. I'm sure that is true. Um, I don't even think we need to fact check. I'm sure that is absolutely true. But she was incredible. And her character at first, I was like, oh, I'm not going to like her. And then I, I did. I thought That's she was That's literally how I felt. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be a fan. And then I was like, nah, she's cool. She's, she's cool. cool. Like, now, as you mentioned, they have a one night stand middle school love and she confesses. She feels guilty. She's like, oh no, you're a nice guy. And like, I'm a call girl. Like, I was hired by somebody and I, I feel so bad and I, I, I swear I'm not like this is my first time doing it i don't want to do it i have a connection with you like do you want to just date me and i'll i'll get off this train which i thought has dating got so bad in detroit in 93 that <laughs> they've become call girls to find the true loves of their lives because that's it's sucks. the new tinder tinder could never <laughs> 
Um, I, I mean, I don't want to deal with Drexel uh, no. to find a boyfriend, but Jesus Christ. Yeah. But That's they, one way to do it. It's very love, actually, right? Cardboard cutout. Oh, my out. gosh. And when they get married the next day... Come, Is it the like, next day? I didn't know the timeline. I thought it was the next day. I you know, it, I guess it was, because she was like, I have no clothes. And I was like, oh, yeah. Where are your clothes? I, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> I but you're like, well, the title's called True Romance, so I guess... Here it is. You know? Here we go. It's and, fucking romance. And to your yeah. point, since the movie is actually all about Quentin Tarantino coming out as gay, we quickly just ignore their love and romance. We get right to the plot. <laughs> we do. So, we do. Um, This is where uh, Clarence Christian Slater's mental health disorder comes in <laughs> comes because in. <laughs> Elvis is in the bathroom. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Elvis is being played. We don't see his face by Val Kilmer. What? <laughs> yes, that's Val Kilmer. We never saw what? his face. How much did they pay Val Kilmer what to the fuck? stand there? Oh my god. Oh my god. Crazy. Why wouldn't you show his beautiful face? I'm I, so upset. Crazy. I'm upset about it. Oh my god. Um, There's so many people in this movie. I can't. That was weird. And all Elvis says is like, yeah, go kill the pimp. And I was like, are you the devil? Is this a, de- is this a demon possession it was, movie? It was very Fight Club. I don't know what was uh, happening. What What's real? What's what's Lit. not real? Mm. But he goes after it, and when we meet Drexel, that is Bridget. Gary Oldman. Bridget, are you kidding me, Gary Oldman? Okay, this was a thing in the nineties. Like he was a white guy, right? There was a lot of white men pretending With... to be black. I would still argue that happens today, but it With was very dogs. very bad. I um, hated it, and I think let's face it, as a country, we're all pretty stupid. But like we were really stupid back then. Yeah, and yeah, this character personifies it but it's a good character because you know she calls him out like Alabama's like yeah he thinks he's black but he's white it was very subtle on like this is stupid and this guy is a terrible person well thank god I was worried he was gonna be there all movie and I was like I don't know if I I, could do it quick yeah I couldn't I don't know if we're gonna make it also how did that guy become the head pimp anyway who cares it just seems Um, like he's just a wild card and murders people because we saw him murder Samuel Jackson he killed Samuel Jackson I know all right well, we got we got to talk about the line from Samuel Jackson. Is it about eating? He goes, "I'll eat anything." <laughs> He t- Which bridge they talked about eating ass. I'm just I know that's not a strictly, you know, I, I, one one route or the other, but I'm just saying it is a route. If we need for any young listeners, this is a, a trigger warning because this is oh. a very R-rated film and we're going to get into it. But Samuel L. Jackson goes on and on about eating pussy. And I yeah. said it and it's inappropriate. <laughs> and I thought it was very funny because the other character in the scene was like that's disgusting. And I was like, are you was, DJ Khaled? What's it was so happening? Soprano. What was Uncle June where they all make fun of him? And I was like, you guys are such little bitches. Well, I was like, ew, God, do we, we've, have we just literally always been this loud about hating women? Like, the, I'm like, I yes. forgot. <laughs> they hate women, but they love peen, Bridge. Oh, my, my thesis God. statement is growing. I'm I, telling you. Well, and I kind of was sad. I was like, man, Samuel L. Jackson is like, we see him and then he's dead. And then yeah. Gary Oldman, I was ready for, I'm with you, I was ready for his character to go. But mm. they find Christian Slater's license, and when he's fighting, he leaves yes. his license there, gets rid of them. He thinks he's the hero, because he, like, killed the pimp, and like you already mentioned, takes the drugs instead of Alabama's clothes. But he didn't leaves his know. license, like a ding-dong. He, I, he didn't know, at least, that he was taking No, cocaine. he didn't know. He really, he really thought it was her, like, suitcase. Which I was like, okay, that's like fine. Yeah, I just the movie escalates. It was like we meet her, we get married, we're killing people. I was like, I thought he was just managing a comic book store. Um, me too. And then that goes <laughs> away, and he abandons his cool boss that bought him an awesome birthday gift. Do you think his boss is like, why haven't you come to work in like three Probably. weeks? I got you a really nice present. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? I thought we were friends. <laughs> When he murders Drexel and then he goes back to the apartment and he like tells her, he's like, yeah, I killed him. I was like, uh-oh, Patricia, but 
Patricia blinks twice when you help, girl. And she starts crying and he gets crazy and just, you know, an outsider looking in. I don't love um, the behaviors and language I'm seeing in this relationship. And I think we're on a path to violence. We already went there because of Elvis. And I don't even know how to make that make sense. But we did it. We and did. I, I she's just like, like it's yeah. cool. I love you. And I was like, what the fuck? Also, he Jesus. ate a lot of cheeseburgers this whole film. And I yeah. and, and the scene you're talking about, I just remember him shoving a cheeseburger. And I actually remember when he was telling her and she started to cry, I thought, oh, she's going to be like, why'd you do that? That's a stupid idea. But instead she was like, I can't believe you and love she's like, me. Yay. <laughs> I was like, oh no, you both are nuts. I would be crying to be like, I married a murderer. I would How too. do I know this marriage? What's the timeline? Can I still like cut cut know this? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Oh my God. But they look at the drug money as like, you know what? We're broke. Because he does, that's part of like the good backstory is he's like, I don't make a lot of money, but you know what? I'm a good time. Marry me. And now they have, in theory, a lot of money, but they got to get it sold for cash. Okay. So he goes to his dad. Yes. Next. His dad is a retired or police officer? Dennis Hopper. Yep. Dennis Hopper. He is not playing Bowser in the Super Mario Bros. Movie. That is another reference that I made believe to that movie. Our age differences because um, I only <laughs> think of the movie Speed of him as oh, the villain. Oh yeah, he was in that too. His right. voice is iconic. You know exactly who he is when he speaks. And yep. this was a very kind of wimpy role for him until the mobster Christopher Walken tries to interrogate him, and then he gets a little more like tough. Well, I also was very focused that he had a why <laughs> <laughs> it looks just like your dog oh, it really looked, so nice. it looked just like bear it was super cute Kate, he did look like bear. did you live in a mobile home next to the train tracks that close no and I, I was so worried a heart i was like quentin if you fucking run over this dog with a train i swear to god i'm coming <laughs> to your house right now and i'm gonna flip a table at your house and leave um but the dog i i tell myself the dog lives because we don't see it get injured oh it the dog is appear. fine the dog ran off you know and what? lives a happy life in i Cancun. actually think the dog is chilling in the mobile home home, eating the rest of the food, going out oh, to the grocery nice. shop and being like, you know what? I'm sad yeah. that my owners died, but I'm free, you know? Yeah. And so when he goes to the dad, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, can you look into the death of this famous pimp drug dealer? And don't ask why. And anyway, see ya. And I was like, that's not chill, dude. Like, why did you do that? The backstory of the this relationship is they haven't spoken in three years. Oh my God. It's so, yeah. And and it comes off, Den- Dennis Hopper's character is like, who are you? You show up, you tell me you're married, you want me to do all these favors for you, who are you? And then you learn a little bit later in the scene that he's also like a deadbeat dad who was kind of yeah. terrible. So you're like, Christian Slater actually isn't even that weird. He's just trying to do what he's got to do. But, but Kate, yeah. let's do, yes, let's get there. Because <sighs> was this Quentin overcompensating because he realized he made so many dick jokes? He's like, wait, 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 wait. I have it. I, I have the solution. <laughs> To balance out. I'm not kissing my father-in-law on the lips like that. Mm -mm. Don't ever. Mm -mm. Don't do that. It's not happening. Don't even think about it, you sicko. I didn't like it. And then I thought it was funny that Christian Slater started yelling. Like, hey, stop kissing my dad. I thought, this is hilarious 90s right now. And she was just like, ha! Silly. Her, I was it, like, what? Well, that was what was so mesmerizing about her character. She laughed so much. She thought, I'm not going to like you. But then you like her because then she's like maniacal. She was a giggle butt. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, So this is where they're like, now we're going to LA and they're going to see his friend, Dick. Michael not Rappaport. Vic. Could have been named Vic, but it was chosen to be named Dick. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Hey, we believe your thesis, but you can All keep right. going. I'm just saying. Let's talk talk about Michael Rappaport. I feel like... Ooh, is okay. that Dick? That's Dick. Oh, he sorry. Okay. is in all the... If people... Some people might know him, some people don't, but if you saw his face, you'd know him. He's in so many movies and it's just this like always weird oafy character and I could not believe most of the movie is spent on him and then in three seconds we see Brad Pitt as his roommates and I'm like... <laughs> 
What? <laughs> Brad what? Pitt is your roommate? Like, he's a pothead. Brad Pitt is like the kind of mooch roommate that's like a he's pothead. Smoking. Doobies on the couch. Not working, eating all the food, mm. drinking all the beer, and Michael Rapport just yells at him the whole time. And I loved the fact that as the mobsters kept trying to like get on Christian Slater's tail, everyone would try to hold information and basically get killed. But Brad Pitt was like, hey, I think they're um they're at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And they're like, cool, man. And then they leave. And then like, you know, they're like, where are they now? He's like, well, they, you had to just make it left. Then you I was make amazed right. that, he, <laughs> ha- that he was paying attention enough because he seemed really high. I was like, are you sure? Like, we want to trust him. I want to believe that's how Brad Pitt actually is. And he just so happened to get famous. I mean, I believe it. I could see that happening. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was a lot. But so they're off to LA. The dad gets visited by the gangsters. Uh-oh. Bridge. Christopher Walken. Tell me what you thought about his eyebrows, because boy, oh boy. <laughs> Incredible. The they slick looked like back some hair. Spirit Halloween. They shit were. Going so, on. first of all, the slang. First of all, they used the N word so much, I was so uncomfortable. I don't like it. And the people that used it were basically all, yeah, most of them. All white. 99% men. white, and that made it worse. Yeah. And then you had like Italian slang, and uh, Christopher Walken, I feel like, so he was young, and he, he didn't have his little stutter then. And I heard it a little. A little, a little. But it wasn't the iconic what he like leans into yeah. now. Yeah. Wasn't like hairspray, off- Christopher. Yeah. Yeah, he came what? off as pretty scary. Mm-hmm. And the conversation between him and Dennis Hopper, how do we even begin to describe what the hell was happening there? Uh, it's racist. I, I don't know what else to say. Insanely racist. And it's so bizarre seeing... He basically gives this whole backstory that Sicilian people were actually like taken over by the Moors and they are have a darker skin color so technically yeah. Sicilians you know had a bunch of breeding with people who had dark skin I mean it's so disgusting and racist and awful but the thing that's so weird to me is seeing Christopher Walken being this bad intense mobster boss and then Tony Soprano's just in the Fucking background bridge. as this I, little assistant he's like I fell oh, out yeah, of my let chair me, let me just slice your hand and scare you I'm little Tony Soprano I was like whoa I whoa whoa s- what timeline <laughs> is this what's happening I swear to god I was like oh no Tony's definitely like the brains like they're gonna do the old switcheroo but they didn't and I was confused it was weird it was so weird he was like he looks so young and nothing not basically Dennis Hopper dies nothing comes out of it and Dennis Hopper's the idiot that like wrote in big bold letters where they're oh, going yeah. on the fridge might as well drew a fucking map dad <laughs> Jesus Christ so Such the ding dong the mobsters are off and we this is where I think the movie gets really really cool is when Michael Rappaport, aka Dick, is like, <laughs> okay, hey, what's up? What's up, Clarence? I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, you're married? Okay. Oh, you have a oh. bunch of cocaine I have to sell? Cocaine? Let's hey, sort some. Hey. Ride or die. I've known you since I was a kid. We'll figure it out. The arc of how they get connected with the other guy whose name is Elliot, who is Bronson yes. P- Pincho? Pin- Pincho? Pin- Pin- He's a super famous know. person from a bunch yes. of like TV and movies if people look him up. Yes. But him bringing in this like coke dealer and then also bringing in like the cops made the plot so good because you had like mobsters coming the cops coming the like coke dealer trying to like sell it and all these things intertwined I loved it I thought the movie got way better once like it got more complicated I agree but oh. I also think it got better because it kind of felt like everybody from then on was on cocaine <laughs> um, yes, and really lots were. of energy Lots of crosstalk, lots of feelings. Oh man! There was, and, and it basically kicks off because when they meet this guy, the Elliot guy, they go on a roller coaster, uh, drug dealing on a roller coaster. It, genius! You can't have anyone <laughs> listening in there. Who's gonna hear that? My God! I. Oh. It's just brilliant. Elliot's 
character was like, I am the go-between, the yeah. big bad movie producer that's actually a cocaine dealer. And then this like little like actor, aka Dick, who's like in my acting class. And I <laughs> and he just never he was uncomfortable in every scene. He didn't want to be in the roller coaster, he threw up afterwards. He didn't want yep. to be a part of the whole like actual like deal. And then yep. he got the cops involved, and he was just like the awkward guy. And I loved that every character added value to yeah. scenes. Um, yeah. And I also hated him. I thought his character was quite annoying. He was annoying. He was gross. Ugh. And he's just like a little pitch. <laughs> and the director, when he calls him, the director is like, why the fuck are you calling me on a Sunday? And I was like, that's a legit question. Coke, Coke dealers have business hours, apparently. I, I mean, that's fair. That's healthy boundaries. Like, I get it. I understand. Um, I don't even know, Bridge, where we are, because I the note I see right here is, Jesus, there's a lot of gay references happening here. It could be any part. <laughs> Any part at well, all. No one okay, knows. this is where Clarence, I will tell you, man, he meets Alabama and he's like, me, Elvis, you, pedal to the metal. Because he's like, we're selling this. <laughs> Elvis is there too. We're he's selling the this wheel. Coke today. Oh and he jumps on the phone with the movie producer. It was like, I'm a, like, then he becomes a drug lord and knows how to use like slang and not say things over the phone. I, I don't even know what's happening, but they're like, we'll meet you at the hotel. I'll give you a sample and we're doing it. And the movie producer's like, I like it. You got balls. And that's what every single person said about him. He liked the balls, Bridge. <laughs> he liked the balls. Add it to the list. Okay. Then I uh, feel like the... This is the Tony Soprano part. Well, wait. So first, I don't remember when the cops exactly came in, but Elliot is getting a blowjob while driving and a was... cop pulls him over. First and of all... I... Then he put. Then he he fights with the girl. Gave him a blowjob and coke goes everywhere. So he goes to almost jail. Bridge roadhead during the day in a convertible. In a convertible. <laughs> what is this? And what I, the bag Who's of doing co- that? The bag of coke they had. I was like, this would kill y'all. This could run this car. I'm surprised it didn't kill him. And I thought he was on cocaine. <laughs> this is again. I, I'm convinced everybody's on cocaine. And it's crazy. Oh my god. Okay. These fucking cops though. Oh my were god. We're on cocaine. Okay, the they cops the are the biggest cop stereotypes I've ever fucking seen in my life. We and had like, Chris Penn no. and Tom Sizemore. Are you kidding me? This is how I know you're young because you're not reacting. No, no. Every time, well, Chris oh. Penn was in Footloose. Yeah. Okay, and I also remember him mainly from uh, Beethoven Two. He was the <laughs> bad guy <laughs> tries to steal the puppies, but. <laughs> He was also footless. Um, they were a lot. I didn't love them, but it was it all. was so it was so good because everybody's like saying to Christian Slater, "How'd you come up with this coke?" So he had to come up with a lie and lies yeah. that another police force, like somebody stole evidence that was a cop that he knew, and he won't say names, and so he gets a cut, they get a cut, everybody wins. When Elliot gets pulled over, he squeals to these mm-hmm. cops, and they're like, "This is gonna be the biggest case in history." It's <laughs> literally that's exactly how they spoke and acted every moment on screen. And I I loved it because I was like, this is bad. Like it keeps getting worse. And uh, then I think Tony Soprano shows up to the hotel room because Brad Pitt's like, oh yeah, they're staying at the Beverly uh, Hotel down the street. Yeah, <laughs> Brad Pitt selling out everybody. And um, Patricia Arquette, in my opinion, gives the best performance of her entire life in this scene i thought it was so awesome yeah she tries to give him you know the old slip around he's not falling for it he's like i fucking know and he just starts eating the shit out of her they get it it was very physical and it was also weird because he doesn't have the tony soprano accent uh -uh. so he was like talking normally and i was like you're not as like i don't know it's like weird he seemed just mean yeah, it was mean. I was. I feel like when he plays Tony Soprano, you kind of are on his side, and he's Tony Soprano smarter and like more. I don't know, gets in your head. This guy was just like, I'm gonna punch you in the face. 
You're like, wow. Yeah, this guy was brute force, and he was kind of distracted by her, like, feminine, you know, um, kind of Oh, yeah, and she, there were parts where she would be like, oh, my God, look at your face, LOL. And then he would literally pause, like, attacking her and be like, okay, let me look. And I was like, what? Tony would never. Tony would never. (laughs) Tony's on a mission. That was my favorite scene. She's in the bathtub after shattering the glass door is full of glass. And he looks at her, and she starts laughing at him and says, you look ridiculous. And then and takes, looks. takes soap and puts it in his eyes, and somehow she she beats him. And I don't she even she sets like, him on fire. I, I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I thought it was such a cool scene. I just, I don't even know. And then I didn't think she'd win. Him. I thought she would die. I, was I like, thought she's, she's going to die, too. I know it's like true romance, but I thought he would just like, you know, become, I don't know, like the head drug lord. A Christian Slater loses his mind. He, he ends up with Elvis, you know? Romance with Elvis. Yeah. I mean, he wanted that in the beginning, so I'm sure he still does. Okay. Foreshadowing. Um, so he dies. El- to- not Elvis. Tony <laughs> dies. Tony's gone. Tony's not Tony Soprano dies. And then literally, this is where Clarence comes back. And he's like, well, sorry. I was just ch- chatting with some he was literally talking to some guy about elvis i was like you need to get a blog or something I, because this obsession is unhealthy your wife is dead almost like almost. focus focus well, and he's getting he's just keeps getting cheeseburgers That's, you know uh, his cholesterol <laughs> is not the, doing well room. let me tell wait, you wait th- I, this is a good moment to pause because when i whenever we do these so not like movie reviews i pull up the cast to make sure i know everybody whatever are we yeah have we mentioned everyone yeah yeah, we, so I have identified someone in this cast, but I don't remember them in the movie, and that is Jack Black. <gasps> what? This, what does it he say is, he did? It, it doesn't give him a name. Was he a little boy? It. I don't know, but it says Jack Black. There's no actor name of like who he played, but he was in this movie. You know movie. what? I guarantee he was probably one of the extras in the casting call scene, like where they were waiting to go do the audition. I bet a million dollars he was probably one of those guys sitting off to the side if you find a listener send us an email and you'll get a t-shirt okay okay i'm glad that he wasn't uh tony soprano because i'm scared um yeah all right we're getting to the final many people we're getting to the final scene right all right let's get to the hotel okay the hotel is where lee donovitz the big major movie producer yes who's actually a coke dealer that elliot whatever gives the hookup to and yes. what he does not know is Elliot has ratted out to the cops and is wearing a wire. And so Alabama, Christian Slater, and then Dick show up. Dick. And yep. they have, they have, a, they don't even, I think, have all, do they have all the coke? Or they do have all the coke. They have all the coke. And they're just ready to do a deal and see what happens. And all Elliot has to do is like get enough on like the yeah. recording that the cops come in. Okay. Wow. But this is where Christian Slater's eyebrows come into play bridge in this elevator scene. <laughs> Because this is, again, I'm like, I'm not loving the behavior. I'm worried about Alabama. I'm worried I'm wor- about like, what? How do we handle our first fight? Is he going to punch you in the face? I think he might. he might. He might kill you. Because I'm afraid. Like, there are warning signs. Oh! But he's basically like, what the fuck? Something's weird. What's going on? Meanwhile, Elliot has the wire and the goddamn cops are like, LOL. Just like keep acting. LOL. Everything's great. I was like, what the fuck? Like, who's on cocaine? This is where, again, who's on the cocaine? Everyone's do on cocaine. Do we all do it? Because I think we did. Those cops were out of control. Where's well, and, HR? And I like, where's HR? I liked the fact that Elliot, because he was so close. He was like, I wish someone would come help me. Like, he had tried so hard to be like, you know, cops, can you help me? Be a cop um, and can, do something? Can, yeah. You know, because, like, I, I'm giving you the information. And it was so good because Christian Slater is such a wild card. And you just thought like does he does he have like criminal instincts that we don't know about or is he just being weird i didn't i didn't get it i don't know but who knows what elvis was telling him to do am i right <laughs> they've got a weird yeah. relationship and alabama just giggles in the corner she's like yeah. god honey relax I'm you're like, crazy oh my god these people do but you think we... that's danielle with our brother jimmy <laughs> she's, she, she's screaming at someone with a gun to their head and danielle's like oh my god danielle's like crazy. god Jimmy, relax. Oh, Jesus. Okay, Um, but listen. They get to the hotel. We get there. Which is fancy. There there are two security guards with a 
semi-automatic rifles. Boris, who does not like cops. <laughs> was that the ponytail guy? Because yeah. those guys, again, I was like, you guys definitely snorted some of the cocaine Holy because cow. is this in your contract to Every... like oh threaten God. the police? I don't know. I know nothing about guns. And all I know <laughs> Me is neither. everybody was holding really big ones the whole movie. Yeah. Why? They were. So I don't many know. big guns. And even Christian Slater's like, I have a gun and I'm packing. And he was like, listen, I'm telling you right now, I'm packing just because I want to be safe. And it was funny because he's like eh, I trust the guy don't worry about it I oh was my like, god why do you that have bodyguards if you trust everybody I don't know this is funny it was absurd and then they start talking about he's like I love that movie you made did you hear the name of the movie they kept talking about this fake movie T- say it again I don't remember it's called coming home in a body bag <laughs> and it was about Vietnam <laughs> and I was like Christ. oh that's a little too real. And that, way... Is that a real movie? Because oh, it might be. I'm God, sorry. horrible. What the fuck? Jesus Christ. There's too much going on right now. And again, I I felt like they were flirting. I felt like there was flirting with the Wait, men. You think with Christian Slater and Lee Donovitz? I do. I do. I do. Too. I, do, I, do. I think I think they would have had some sexy time if, you know, there weren't as many guns. But it got, it got to the point that once they said, okay, let me get the money. And I think that's all yes. the cops needed. And you're right. They were raging with coke. My ready God. to go in there and shoot people. They fly into the room and everyone's like, whoa, what's happening? But Bridge, before they fly in the room. Oh, yeah. I do just want to mention because yeah, it is yeah. part of my thesis paper. Elliot's wire was allegedly only able to be put in his crotch. In his crotch. So he kept, which yeah. therefore meant we had... Had at least three to four crotch grab shots. A lot of close cop- up on the crotch. Yes, you're Quentin. Right. Qu- Quentin. Do you think? Do you think he just has like a spinner and he's like, what body part will we obsess about? And it just was like rigged somehow to always land on like a penis. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Anyway, but that's that. And then um, <laughs> Christian Slater is not in the main room when all the cops come in because he's like, I go piddle. He's I'll like, go. I gotta go talk to Elvis. <laughs> Elvis is watching him pee. Bridge, what is this relationship? I don't know. He's like, I'm proud of you, Clarence. You yeah, definitely deserve a cheeseburger. <laughs> 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 Go find Tony Soprano and Jack Black and lay oh, back. Oh my fucking god! I, 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 I and then it just—I don't even—I don't even know if I took notes because it was just a big explosion at the end. It was wild. Well, it it was funny when the cops started. Everyone's like, "What the fuck's happening?" And you don't know who ratted out, who ratted anybody out. Like you don't—you're just like, "Oh shit, the cops are here." Mm-hmm. And then when the mobsters come in, everyone's like, "Oh no." We thought uh, more the, no. we, we thought the drugs were this like police force story. Now, oh no, that's a lie. Oh no, this is bad. And everyone at the same time is realizing it. And the security guards are like, "We're gonna kill the cops." Oh, and then the guy was like, "Why?" And then the guy, like you said, just goes, "I hate the cops." It was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> and and then once they're still at the standstill, Elliot, I think, ruins it. What a fucking moron. He is. He's like, hey, uh, cop X, can I get out of here now? In front of everybody. And then his boss, Lee, loses it and is like, you ratted me out. I hate you. And I just feel like it just exploded after that. Everyone got shot. Everyone died. It was crazy. Before he dies, the boss goes, you better burn your SAG card. And I was like, wow. <sighs> that's dramatic. Uh, but then everybody <laughs> dies, so and, that's I mean, more they're dramatic. All, they're, they're all dead, so what's more Everybody's dramatic? Everybody's dead, and that's worse. Um, yeah. Christian Slater gets shot In the eyeball. By a cop. Yeah. Fuck. Okay, and Alabama somehow oh. doesn't get touched. This girl. And she just I, I crawls mean, away. I mean, she, uh, how does she do it? The form, the army crawl form is uh, out of control, I gotta say. She finds her true love, Christian Slater, and her thinks true he's... True romance. <laughs> true romance. <laughs> yes. Thinks he's she dead. Does. But then he breathes again. She can't believe it. And they just walk out of the hotel like it's a weekend from Bernie's and nothing's wrong. And he could barely move or see. So fucking casual walking <laughs> out. <laughs> what? The, and they what? take the cash. They basically did it. They have a suitcase full of $200,000 and they just head to Cancun. And they don't need IDs or anything because they're just driving to Mexico. And Bridge. It's 1993, Kate. There ain't no rules. Bridge, I don't know, again, the timeline, but I... 
I, I'm pretty sure this didn't happen the next day because of science. But when we see them next, they're happy on a beach and there is a little toddler boy that is their son. Bridge, what'd they name him? Elvis. They named him Elvis Gaines. <laughs> After Clarence's real true love. <laughs> His real true romance was the man. Okay, I'm just going to say Elvis. it's a missed opportunity to not call her, like, Memphis because of Elvis, <laughs> but we'll take Alabama. <laughs> we yeah. did it! Wow. Woo! We tried Woo! to not talk about how racist the dialogue oh, is. Oh, it's so racist. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's um, a lie. My favorite characters are in order. Patricia Arquette. Okay. Brad yep. Pitt. Oh, yeah, yeah. And... I'm kind of on the fence between Lee Donovitz, that dude, and the okay. cops. Like I kind of loved Chris Penn. Oh, I kinda, the cops I just... are the cops are a lot lower for me yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, you? Uh, well, now that I know Val Kilmer was in it, um, he might be <laughs> up like there. Elvis? <laughs> Which, by the way, his character on IMDb it says he played not Elvis, he played mentor. Oh my god! Might as well call it fleshlight. Am I right? Okay. <laughs> uh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone does not know this, Katie's theory, you're not uh, listening. You need to be ready for the test, people. It's coming. Sh- so um, what do you think? Watch it or don't watch it? Wow. I mean, this so this was my first watch. Me and too. I mean, it, it was... It was a ride. It was, it was a, ride. a ride. I feel like I'd... I think realistically, I'd only watch it again if it's with someone who hasn't seen it. So I can watch their reactions. Because I certainly had a lot of reactions. And... Yeah. I would also make sure someone's like old enough and is aware that it's inappropriate. Yeah, that yes, that's It did throw me off. I was like, whoa, this is like dialogue I was not prepared for. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But I think I'd, I think I'd watch it too. I think if it's a Sunday and I'm just kind of sitting on the couch and it comes on, I'm not turning it off. It's fun. Yeah. What's Alabama and Tony Soprano beating the shit out of each other in a motel? I'm here for it. Yeah. So, wow. Well, Bridge. Yeah. It's my pick. I have no idea where you're going to go because I really usually don't. never do. <laughs> and in fact, I didn't know where I was going to go until I found it. <laughs> So, oh, really? Bridge, we are staying in the 90s. Oh, are we? We fucking are. Now, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. This was a pretty intense movie. Okay. And before that was pretty intense with Twister. Okay, yes. And I can't remember what came before that, but I think it was probably also intense. So, we're gonna chill. Oh. We're gonna chill out. We are gonna get some children. Okay? That's right. The oh. kids are coming. Okay. <laughs> okay. This movie is from 1990. Six. It is rated PG. It stars. I don't believe we've done a movie with the main star. We have done a movie with one of the adult actresses. Uh, this was a Nickelodeon Studios movie. What? Oh, so yeah. It's like, all right, you got to give me more context. Actually, I'm, I'm wondering if you've seen this. All right. Um, let me see. Can I read you the one sentence? All right. I'm not gonna read the first part of this one sentence. It's not one sentence. I'm gonna read you the second. When her friend find her secret notebook the tables are turned on her can she win them back and still keep going on with the the spy business that Harry comes away the spy yes <laughs> with like michelle what's her name michelle Trachtenberg. oh my god and bitch rosie o'donnell you son of a bitch thank god no. you're here um that's about it uh for <laughs> The recognizable people. Are the kids in this? She used to be Catwoman. Look how young everybody looks. Wow. I know, it's crazy. Okay, here's what I'm going to say about this movie. I know I built it up like it's going to be lighthearted and fun. Guys, this is a very psychologically heavy movie. Oh, no. We've we've got (laughs) themes. Oh. We've got sad children. We've got broken families. We've got poverty. We've got other shit that I can't think of. Okay. We got bullying. Um, But there's also spy stuff. Stuff and it's silly so i don't know be ready for that but there's no cocaine <laughs> So we're gonna take a break from that. Yeah, well, it's gonna be more of a downer than an upper. So well, to speak. 
Maybe. Okay. All right. We'll see. Not a listener pick? Uh, it's it's just not. Um, okay. I don't okay. think so. Okay. But maybe I'll look in and make sure nobody recommended this because this is a great one and I'm ready. Have you seen this before? I am I am going into my memory bank like a rope. I'm trying to pull out. Have I seen this? I'm going to say yes. I remember okay. nothing about the movie. Oh, So I well. wonder if it will come back to me when we put it on. Okay. Interesting. We'll see. And by we'll we, see. I mean me and my parents precious dog penny <gasps> wow all right <laughs> Well, Bridge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just want to say. Uh, oh my God, I'm nervous. This is what the can final drinking game that Kate will mention. Another theory <laughs> of penises. This is it. This is the last shot. If there was a penis, then someone were to suck it. It'd be a dude. Uh, I feel like I want to say something about us doing a drug deal, and somehow I get us out of it. Wow. Safely to save you. I don't know. I mean, I would shoot people for you, Bridge. If we're in a shootout, I'll. I'll shoot him. Oh, fucking nice. shoot him. I don't think I have great aim, and I definitely can't army crawl as well as Patricia Arquette, but I'll try. Wow. And I don't know. Is sweet. that help or is that, that's for you? But you I know, um you know, Kate, I would I, I actually have no I have no idea where to go with this, but I would I also sh- I would definitely shoot people for you. And I think the biggest thing that we learned is if we are ever in danger just to act like Clarence and somehow it'll work out. So yeah, if get you those need eyebrows. me to act like Clarence for you and any situation whether it's like you're not getting a deal on your coupon um you know your boss is being mean just let me know um i feel like we could also maybe just look to smoke weed with brad pitt you know (gasps) i think that like oh i want that yeah like that's we could do that too but 1993 brad pitt you know that's a different brad pitt it is that's a Mm. thelma louise brad pitt okay not all this fancy brad pitt now all right folks yes wow we did it wow well and listeners if you also would uh toke a bowl with brad pitt in 1993 not today and if you think that quentin it's okay to live your life truthfully you your can true romance <laughs> you can your true romance can be revealed it's a safe space we love you no matter what and you know you you talk more about feet now i get it I, I don't get it, but I, you know, I recognize it. Oh, God. What are you sharing? <laughs> We're just screen sharing. I'm afraid. <laughs> I just realized there, that wait, he has, I just realized that he has Elvis glasses on. No! <laughs> Oh my god, and his hair is kind of Elvisy. Oh my god. Oh my edge. god. Okay, sorry. Just keep what is going. the title of that article? I thought that's what you were showing me. Oh no, I was just showing you how he. I forgot that he looks like Elvis the whole time. Oh god. All right, back to focus, focus. If you yeah. also think that Clarence and Elvis should just go get married, and then I don't know, Alabama could be there too. Fine. <laughs> you should write us a review. Hey. We love reviews. We love written reviews. You can review us on Apple Podcasts along with some other podcasting apps. We also have a website, sisterswhoseenit.com. On our website, you can request a movie. So this movie, True Romance, was requested by James. James went on the website. He did. Filled out the form. He did. And we picked it. We did. And your recommendations go on a list. And we go through the list. And we will do it eventually. Love it. And Bridge, what else can they do on our website? They can buy us coffee, which is money, oh, and oh. therefore we won't have to sell the cocaine. Oh, Or please. our merchandise. Wow. And then we can just be as cool looking as Brad Pitt as a bomber roommate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Yes. So check all that out, listeners. And we hope to hear from you. All right. Well, we'll see you all next week for Harriet the Spy. Harriet. I feel like I remember the trailer of this movie more than the movie. The aggressive hairstyle with the the middle part and the low ponytail is all I remember. You know what? It's a look. It's a look. I'll see it's you there, a Harriet. Fucking look. If see you, you can there. Find it. Bye-bye. 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 Bye bye. I love you. Bye Clarence. Bye Elvis. I love you. It's okay bye, to be guys. gay. Be gay. I love be you. Safe. Being gay is awesome. Okay. Bye. Love you. Thanks for tuning in to Sisters Who Seen It. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out our website at sisterswhoseenit.com, where you can email us, request movies to be reviewed, and keep up to date with all things sisters. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week.